So with that being said, I'd like to introduce you to Matt Weber. He is with Alpha Funding. He is a, um, a seasoned lender, definitely someone, Dane, that you might want to talk to. He can teach a lot, um, listen to what he has to say. He's got a great way of introducing the system. He's been in the business for a number of years. I personally have known him since 2015, I think. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a long time. Um, so I definitely recommend him. And I'm going to let him speak for himself. His presentation, I happen to have heard before, is wonderful. So um, I look forward to hearing it. Okay, Matt, it's all yours. Thank um, you. Let me share your, uh, let me give you the screen so you can share yours if you'd like to. Absolutely. Um, before I share my screen, I'll just quickly sure. introduce myself. So my obviously my name is Matt and yes, Andrea and I go way back. I come back like many people. Uh, I think it's very rare to find people that just fall into success and it's just, they've always had success. Most people, you know, they come from success. They come from hum humble beginnings. And for me, I'm just a, an everyday person, just like everyone here on this call. Uh, I haven't been in real estate my entire life. I started working with Alpha Funding seven years ago. I had the absolute pleasure of being introduced to my partner, David Hansel, who was my boss at the time. My two partners, Mark and David Hansel, uh, Mark Colazzo and David Hansel started Alpha back in 2007. I'll share my screen here so you guys can see this. Uh, full screen, full screen, full screen. Where's my full screen? Do I go to full screen? I always get confused trying to get it, so I can't give you any good suggestions. Yeah. I mean, I could just use this for now. Um, in the meantime, you know, we were talking about alpha funding. Now, the presentation that I want to discuss with you all is being a better borrower. And it seems like it's such a simple thing. And it is in a way, uh, Michael and I, Michael Strasser and myself, we really have been running the day-to-day -day at Alpha for the last couple of years. But when we first started, Michael and I were both in the trenches every single day. And you know, we've, we're still in the trenches every day, but obviously David and Mark started Alpha in 07. Michael started off as an underwriter and I came on board and my primary job was to build up the business uh, via business development, sales, networking, anything I could do to help generate loan business. So Dane, you know, we should definitely connect after this call. Um, but Mike and I always have had this unique kind of yin and yang to each other where Michael always worked on the underwriting side and he's always the operational guy. He's always the no person. And I'm not saying he's always a no person, but I was always on the sales side and I'm always the yes, yes, yes guy. So Mike and I always would have this nice back and forth. And it was almost like pickleball, ping pong, tennis, whatever analogy you want to use. And we have over the last couple of years, we've really zoned in on what it is that makes up a good borrower. And really what it is, is kind of putting yourself in the other person's shoes. If you're a private lender, if you're a hard money lender, what are the things that you would want to see somebody presenting to you? If you were looking for an opportunity, if you're an investor, if it's your first deal, uh, I was just on the phone with a couple of investors that they've now done over 30, 40, 50 deals, whether it's your 50th deal or if it's your first deal, how do, how do you really present yourself as best as possible? Because believe it or not, if you're prepared, if you're knowledgeable, if you have good expectations, if you have a good mindset, which those are big words that I just said to you, I was kind of teasing our presentation, you're going to be a better borrower. And the thing is, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So everything that you're doing in your day-to-day -day life, whether it's in your real estate investment business, whether it's in your W-2, nine to five job, whatever situation you have, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. You don't just change the way you are. You're always going to be the same, whether you're at home and you're cooking a meal, if you're outside and you're cleaning up the yard, if you're at work and you're putting something together for your job, most people carry themselves the same way throughout their life. So expecting that things are going to be different just because you want to invest in real estate and you're going to be a different person, make sure that I'm going backwards and then going to the front, make sure that you have the right mindset. So that's the first thing is you have to make sure that you have your mind right. You have to take care of yourself. You got to take care of your business. But 
what Mike and I were really trying to distill down, which is the whole thing that we're going to talk about today, is what makes up a, you know, a good borrower. How do you become a better borrower? How do you get more, right? Because some people, I think people get frustrated sometimes when they're like, these other people, they're the same as me, but they get, it seems like they're, at least they're getting an advantage. Like maybe, I don't know, people talk about getting a competitive advantage. You want an, a competitive advantage? Every single one of you, Andrea, she knows this, Nate, Dane, Christine, Melissa, if you want a competitive advantage, do what I tell you to do in this presentation, because this is exactly what every lender, we go to the National Private Lenders Association, they have an event every year, the American Association of Private Lenders, we're part of all these national private lender organizations, we talk to the big lenders, we talk to the little lenders, we talk to the brokers, and these concepts remain the same across any any type of uh, lending, and I bet you this probably would just go across any type of just thing in life because these are pretty basic principles. Are you prepared, right? If you're if you're rushing to the finish line, or if you're coming like it's a fire drill. Imagine if there was a fire in the house, and you had a couple of things that kind of led you to knowing that there was a fire in the house, versus all of a sudden being locked in a door in a corner, having no way out, and all of a sudden seeing smoke, and then having to jump out a window. You hear the you know the the fire alarm going off. If you're prepared, it's going to be a whole lot different than if you're not prepared. The next thing is education, and and Andrea used knowledge when I was doing my last presentation for this. Knowledge is power. So if you have the knowledge, like, and I'm going to use Andrea a lot in this because we've spoken over the years. Andrea knows what I'm looking for. So if she knows what I'm looking for, just like in a relationship, if you know what the other person wants, why not give it to them? You can also understand how to withhold something that they may want, right? So everything in life is all about give and take. So if you know what the, the lender is looking for, why not give them what they want? You're going to probably get them to maybe maybe make an exception for you, maybe do something for you that you wouldn't have. If you were being difficult, do you, I mean, we're human beings. We all have bad days, but do you think that somebody's going to want to go above and beyond for you if you've been making their life very difficult? And that goes for us as well as a lender. I take that very seriously. If I'm working with you, my job is to make your life easier. I'm trying to make sure that I know what you're looking for. Because I want to get the loan. We all want to make money in this world. We all want to be able to provide for our families. We all want a better lifestyle. We all want a better opportunity at this thing that we call life. So using these basic principles, again, this is what Mike and I would always talk about. If it were so simple, what is it? Expectations. I just talked about that. Knowing what to expect. And then we talked about mindset. So Really quickly, I'm going to go into a little bit deeper some of these concepts, but it's not rocket science. And that's what I want to go through really quickly is that being a better borrower, it's not complicated. I took organic chemistry in, high, in uh, college. I took physics. I took, oh, I was a biology major. So to circle back to what I was talking about before about how I've had the absolute pleasure of meeting my partner, David, I was a personal trainer. Before I was a personal trainer, I wanted to get into medicine. Uh, I wanted to have a better lifestyle, right? So all these things, sometimes we think that there's one single path to get to where we want to be. And there's different paths. There's different ways to get to the same place that you think you want to be. There's not one path. And also something that I've been learning in my life, I'm humbled every day, is that it's not a straight line. So if you think success is just like, so if you're a newer investor and you haven't had a, if you haven't done a deal yet, or if this is your 40th or 50th deal, expect issues to pop up along the way. If you think it's just going to be a slow and steady climb, then you know you have to talk to some other investors who've been through it and understand that there's going to be issues that occur, but that's fine. But these things are going to help you kind of make things, I would say, more manageable, more tolerable throughout the process. Because if imagine if you're a first-time investor and you go through a deal and you have a horrible experience, if you had an, if you went to a restaurant and you sat down and you had a horrible experience at that restaurant, would you go back to that restaurant? No, you're never going to because there's options out there. There's different ways to make money. Real estate is an incredible investment vehicle. If you are looking to build wealth, if you're looking to help your family, support yourself, do things that you want to do, go on uh, cruises and, and vacations. 
Real estate can be an incredible way to make your life better, easier, more affordable, but there's also other ways to do it. So if real estate doesn't work out, you know, then that's somebody who I'm not going to probably see. And in Alpha, we're going to be a around for a very long time. We've been around since 2007. Uh, I recently became a partner at Alpha. And over the next 25 years, I want you guys to see this. And, and I hope I'm going to be able to get in front of even more people as the years go by and really drill down these basic concepts. Because again, success doesn't have to be complicated. What it really is, is it's consistency, execution, consistent execution, making sure that you have these things that we're about to talk about down pat. It doesn't have to be complicated. So again, I did, you know, I took organic chemistry. I took those crazy courses, physics. I didn't do very well because I wasn't super interested in them. I was only doing it because it was a means for me to become a doctor because I wanted to be a doctor because doctor is going to help me make more money. But yet being a doctor, if you look at a lifestyle of a doctor and a lifestyle of a real estate investor, you know, real estate is not all sunshine, rainbows, butterflies, but being a doctor is pretty tough and you can make uh, infinitely more money as a real estate investor than a doctor. And you have to deal with all these other people telling you how to, you have to, how you have to live your life, how you have to operate when you can be your own boss as a real estate investor, okay. or at least work inside of real estate on your own terms. So I was taking all these classes thinking this was a way for me to get to where I wanted to be. And I went back into personal training. It was something that I really knew I liked. I was like, maybe I'll go into upper management. Maybe I'll open up my own gym. I'll be an entrepreneur. I've always had that hustler mentality as I was growing up. And then I met a person who introduced me to my partner, David. And he said, Matt, he's like, you work hard. You're a good guy. I want to introduce you to somebody. This is a great opportunity. He's in real estate. He does private lending. You know, he's got a company, really nice company. I know them. Give this guy a call and I want you to, you know, see, maybe you might have an opportunity. And, you know, within two weeks, I, I transitioned away from having 30 clients, which my 30 clients that I was working with at the time, I handed them all the way to my close friends at the gym. And I was working at Lifetime, switched over to real estate and started doing something that I had no knowledge of. This is now seven years ago. I'm talking about something from an authority standpoint, right? As a, with knowledge and with authority, but this is seven years ago. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know what a note was. I thought it was a piece of like, you know, like, that, <laughs> like, like a notepad. I thought that's what a note was. And now I've learned what a note really is in the finance world or in real estate. Um, so anybody can do this. I, I obviously, I've been consistent about my approach. I've had amazing support along the way. I have amazing partners. I have an amazing team. I have an amazing network. I've been able to meet people like Andrea along the way. And it's a lot of it boils down to consistency. And it's about, like I said before, understanding that this is not going to be a straight line up. For you to be successful, you're going to have to accept some punches and some kicks and some bumps and bruises along the way. But how can we minimize them as much as possible? Everyone wants to borrow money. Everyone wants to invest in real estate. How do we give you a, you know, almost like a cheat sheet for getting money easy and knowing how to influence somebody to give you more money? So again, I'm just going to say really quickly, you have preparation, be prepared, education and knowledge, making sure that you educate yourself. If you know what you're looking for, if you understand the subject matter, it's a lot easier to speak about it or even um, differentiate things, discern things, expectations, which is really all about just understanding where people stand or what, what people are looking for. And then mindset, it all boils down to, you know, are you somebody who has a closed mindset or are you somebody that has an open um, abundance mindset? Are you a scarcity mindset or abundance? To break down preparation, one of the first things were preparation and education and knowledge kind of go side by side. Because for you to be prepared, you're going to be most likely educating yourself and providing yourself with knowledge and the ammunition for you to be successful. Being prepared means, like I said, if you're in that fire at the home and you don't have a plan and you don't have windows, if you don't have doors, if you don't have an exit plan, if you don't know the signs of what a fire is going to look like, you're going to be stuck in that corner with no way out. And you're going to see the smoke and you're going to see the smoke alarm. You're going to have anxiety. You're going to start panicking. 
versus, oh, this is just a fire. Where's my fire extinguisher? Let me call the fire department. Oh, I have this. I have this. I know what my plan is, right? So if you're trying to borrow money from a hard money lender, from a private money lender, I'm speaking mostly from Alpha's perspective. We're a hard money lender. We lend nationwide. We lend on fix and flip, new construction. If you're buying rental properties, a lot of you, Pittsburgh, it's a tremendous market. Um, I actually went out to Pittsburgh a couple of years ago and I loved it. The suburbs that surround the city, it's one of the most beautiful cities. It's so underrated, Pittsburgh. Um, if you're buying rental properties, if you're doing fix and flips, if you're doing executing the BRRRR strategy before you refinance out, if you're buying and building new construction, if you're buying up maybe commercial multifamily or commercial mixed use, you like commercial real estate, that's your appetite. We lend on those nationwide minus five states. The five states that we don't lend in is Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, Vermont, and Idaho, and now Oregon. So there's six. <laughs> Oregon, Oregon, I believe we can, but for just for some reason, somebody had a deal out there the other day. We tried it. We're just going to say that we don't lend in Oregon. So for the most part, six states, um, 44 states out of the country, we're lending in, and we've been doing this for a very long time. We manage multiple pools of capital, including our own. So when you're working with us, you're not just working with one lender that has one capital source that is maybe a one-man band or whatever it may be. We have multiple people, people that execute and have specific roles in specific areas. Like when it comes to your loan being serviced and you have payments or if you need to get a draw, we have somebody specifically for that that just does that, an expert in that field. Pat's been working with us for the last eight years. He's been doing this for over 30 years in the real estate business. Underwriters. We have underwriters that have been doing this for over five years, and all they do is underwrite risk and look at deals for profitability. And also, is this a good deal for you and also for us as a lender? We have people that just go out and just go meet people. So, like, we're not just, again, that one lender that has one capital source and is maybe just one person where if I'm not available, we have an entire team behind us. And that's partially why I want to contribute a lot of my success is because I've been humbled and really, really lucky to have such an amazing team that supports me. And one thing is, if you're going to borrow money, who are you borrowing the money from? You want to understand who your lender is. If they are truly a private lender, what are the pros and cons to that? If you're working with a hard money lender, understanding what are the pros and cons to a hard money lender, a private money lender, going to a traditional bank, know what your options are. Um, if you're going to be using credit, what are those options? So like I said, with I'm going to be talking primarily from the hard money perspective. One of the best things you can do is get pre-approved. It's a simple thing like you would like pre-approve, right? It seems so simple. And that's why most people write it off, but they don't understand that there's a power to it. When I bought my first investment property, one of the first things I did was I was going to a, a networking event in the state of New Jersey. And in New Jersey, there is a networking event called the New Jersey Real Estate Social Network. It's where I actually met Andrew for the first time. And there was a mortgage professional. He's a um, on the traditional mortgage side. I met, built a relationship with. He told me, Matt, why don't you come to the office one day? We'll fill out the paperwork. We'll get you pre-approved. I told him I wanted to buy a multifamily. And I had no property in front of me at that moment. So I think, uh, Christine, I think you had said that you haven't identified a property yet. That's totally fine. Here's an exact example of somebody who did exactly where you are and saw success. And sometimes that's important to draw similarities and parallels. I went, I got pre-approved. As soon as I had that piece of paper, within an hour, our process simply is you fill out this little form. I'm going to show you at the end. It's probably 10 minutes. Quickly fill out some basic info. You just We do a soft pull on your credit. You give us our your stated income, financial stuff, um, a little bit of information about yourself. And then we do a phone call interview with you with one of our underwriters. So we're going to spend, it's almost like an interview, but it's really us getting to know you like a cup of coffee. We sit down, we get to know what you're looking to do. Um, if there's a specific area, a type of real estate that you like, maybe resources that you need, things that you're good at, things that you may be missing and how we can compliment you as a capital partner. We do that call. And then as soon as you're done, which is usually within a day, you're pre-approved. And you're like, okay, so now I'm pre-approved. When I got that pre-approval for my house, 
I was then able to go out. I had buying power. I had confidence. And I started looking at properties. And am I going to be hesitant with having that pre-approval? Now, there's a difference between a pre-approval and pre-qualification. I'm not a specialist on the traditional side, but having that confidence going into an opportunity, that's huge. And a lot of that also goes to mindset. So preparation and mindset also go hand in hand. By being pre-approved, you're going to be more confident. You're going to want to look at properties. You're going to want to make offers. You're not going to be hesitant. We have a pre um, a proof of funds um, feature for alpha funding that we provide. We started doing it about a year and a half ago, where if you go on our website and you go on pof.alphafunding.com, Peter, Oscar, uh, France, uh, .alphafunding.com, it takes you to a little, a little, a little form, and once you're pre-approved with us, you can get automatic proof of funds generated all day, any day. And if it's a, you know, a little fix and flip, or if it's new construction, you need to submit a proof of funds. You could probably walk up from the time you're in your car to the time you get to the car uh, to the front door. You could probably have that proof of funds in your hand by the time you get to the door. By the time you were in your car and you're putting it in there, and if you had to make a counter offer. You could do it again. You just put in the new numbers. It's basically your name, your contact info, your LLC name, if you have one, property address and offer amount. How powerful is that? And like being a better borrower, it's about also standing out among others, right? If we're real estate investors, there's a lot of people out there that are doing what you want to do. So what's going to separate you? When I started at Alpha, who am I? Like, who am I? I know who I am now, but at the beginning... Knowing what is your what differentiates you is really understanding what your superpower is. <clears throat> I know I know what my superpower is now. And it was about me kind of learning some of the business and then being able to integrate that with me being myself and what are my superpowers? And that's you know, connecting with people, taking genuine care of people. Um, I love helping people because I've seen that in my life, the more I help people, the more I get. And I, I've been in my life at points where I wanted to help myself first. And I noticed that when you have scarcity, right? If you take, 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 I noticed that I was losing. And the more you give, the more you get. And I and it may be cliche, it may be cheesy, but I believe that the universe, it, it has shown it at least to me. And I know there's a lot of people out there that will also, that are way more intelligent and smarter than me, that will show you that obviously the more you give, the more you get. Make sure that you get pre-approved. It'll make you feel better. You'll be more confident. Get your house in order. Um, right here, I have proof, uh, personal financial statement, credit track record. A lot of borrowers, they come to us, so they may not be pre-approved. Okay, we get pre-approved. What else should you have? When the underwriter is asking you for your personal financial statement, your credit and your track record, what you should be doing is saying, here, 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 here you go. Some of our best borrowers, when we work on deals, when somebody needs funding in two weeks and they fill out an application and it looks beautiful. And these are like days, like when somebody fills out the application exactly the way that I'm talking about and do all these things that we're talking about today, it is the most refreshing thing in the world. And it's not to say that borrowers are incapable of doing this. It's just that it's so simple to just execute and do things the right way. It's very rare to see it on a consistent basis. When you have your personal financial statement just ready in a file, like have you sat down and looked at all of your expenses or all of your uh, assets, all of your liabilities? What is your income? How is it broken up? Like we have a, 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 a personal financial statement that we can give to you, but you can find them on the internet. You just type in personal financial statement. Most banks have one. And just having that available, you should maybe be doing that once a year. Know what your personal financials look like. Just like your credit, and we're going to get to that right now, your credit is a fingerprint on who you are, the way you handle financials, you know, the way you handle credit. So do you know what your credit score is? You know, everyone's sitting here on this call. If I ask you, what do you think your credit score is, plus or minus about 10 points, do you know what your credit score is? There was a point in my life when I didn't even want to know what my credit score was. When you're doing really well, you know exactly what your credit score is because it's almost like it's the kid in school that when they get a 94 and they're upset that they didn't get the 97, they missed that one question versus the kid who doesn't study, doesn't care what grade they get, and they know that they failed. They don't even want to know the number. 
that's kind of like the way credit, like if you have some of these things in order, you're going to want to know what your credit is. So, but also if your credit's not good on the other side, make sure that you understand why your credit's not good. There's ways that you can improve your credit score pretty like almost like easily by just understanding maybe one or two things that might be hindering your credit score. It could be utilization. It could be inquiries. It could be uh, late, you know, charge-offs, different things like that. Again, I'm not an expert in this. We have people that we use, but understanding your credit and maximizing it, credit opens up your door. I could do a whole presentation on just credit alone. It's incredible what you can do when you have good credit. People think they're always looking at when I'm trying to get my first deal done, Where's the money? Where's the money for my deal? You should not be thinking about money when you're getting your first deal. The first thing you should be thinking about is how do I maximize my credit? How do I look as attractive as possible, prepared, knowledgeable, educate myself, and then expectations, make sure I know what other people are looking for so I can make myself look more attractive, give them what they want. If I know what they want, why don't you give them what they want? They're the ones that give you, that are giving you the money. If it's the bank, if it's a private lender, whoever. And then obviously mindset, make sure that you're like, people don't want to work with people that are hesitant or if they're unhappy, if they're grouchy, right? So all these things work for everything. Track record. If you've done deals before, have a simple spreadsheet with your deals on them. It seems so simple. But when we get these sheets, if Priscilla were to work with you, you had a deal, you brought it to us. And all of a sudden we asked for, what is your personal financial statement? What's your credit? What's your track record? And you just sent us an email with all three attached. You got pre-approved within a day. You have access to proof of funds. You sent us what we need. Like all we need to do is order an appraisal and get a budget. Like you've made it so easy for us to say, I approve, here's the money. And these are such simple things, but people don't do it. They don't have their personal financial statement readily available. They don't have their credit in order. They don't have a track record when they've done deals. You should be proud of the deals you've done and have them all ready. If somebody said, oh, can you show me a little bit of the work you've done? Hold on one second. Click, click, click. All right. I just sent, I just sent you an email. Here's a resume of all the different deals that I've done. You should show, you should be proud of those deals. Um, so being prepared, a lot of these things are just going to obviously make you appear as if you're a better investor, but really all you're doing is just making sure you have all your D all your T's crossed and your I's dotted doing your due diligence on a property. When you come to us and you say, listen, I have this property, one, two, three main street. And you know, the area, you know, where the comps are, you've provided some comps to us, maybe even ahead of time before the appraisal, you told us that, you know, this is a market that, you know, if it's a single family market, if it's a multifamily market, this is what the market really, really has seen. I've done a couple of deals here, or I know that a lot of investors have been doing this. Here's my information to show you like, okay, what, like, I would love to hand you the money at that point. Most people, when we ask them questions about the property, they're just guessing. They're like, well, I don't know, you know, maybe this is going to be that. And like having hesitation, not knowing your information is going to kill you. So we're going to get to obviously knowledge and education in a second. Sourcing your funds, making sure that you know where your funds are coming from. So outside of the hard money where we're funding anywhere between like 70 to 90% of the project, what are you going to do with that gap money? Are you using your own money? Are you raising that other money? Are you borrowing that money? Are you using credit for that money? Make sure that you have your plan in place. Don't play checkers, play chess. If you don't know what chess is, learn how to play chess. Because if you play checkers, you'll know very quickly when you get yourself into a quick, you know, a little sticky situation in chess. It's one, you think you're making a quick little move and it's smart. And all of a sudden you catch yourself. Chess, sometimes there's a lot of different ways to get to different places. So do you know, that type, have that type of a mindset when you're working, um, you know, with your lenders, education and knowledge. I said something about just knowing the, you know, having a pulse on the market, studying your market and knowing some of these basic things like absorption rates, specific trends, where things are going in the market. Um, if you understand the current economic conditions, you're not going to come to us. And, and trust me, I've had people do this to us. They've said, Matt, I want 
my last loan was at 8.99% and one point. Now, if you don't know what that means, that's basically the interest rate and that's the origination fee for the loan. But at 8.99% if you know the market and you understand what the market is dictating, just like the stock market, just like inflation with certain goods, right? Consumer goods, you know not to ask for certain things if you know that the market is not there. So when I hear somebody asking for an 8.99, now there are some situations where certain rates and certain things, it's never 100%. But generally speaking, I know where all the lenders are. We were in the eights and the nines and the tens for about a couple of years. There was an incredible um, infusion of capital into the, into the private equity, uh, institutional capital, credit, into our space in the real estate uh, mortgage-backed securities over the last couple of years before COVID. And you saw tons and tons of lenders all coming into the space. And everyone, if they were trying to get competition, right? If there's more people competing for the same uh, business, what you're going to do is if one's charging this and you want to get the business, you're going to charge a little bit less. And then if the next person charges this, if you want to get the business, you got to charge a little bit less. And there was this crazy race to the bottom. We have seen the exact opposite. We've unraveled that in a span of almost a year, year and a half now. We're going on two years since the beginning of COVID. And as we got through the inflation period, when we started, the Fed rate started to raising uh, rates, the interest rates and cost of capital has gone up. So if you want to make sure that when you're talking to lenders and you want to have leverage, if you want to appear as if you know what you're talking about, making sure that you have realistic expectations. And that's the next word after this. So they all keep going with each other is knowing where we stand with certain things. What are the mortgage rates? You know, not asking for a 4% mortgage when the rates are in the sevens, not asking for a hard money loan in the eights when they're really in the tens, 11s and 12s, just things change, but opportunities are still available. And, you know, just like lumber went up, if, if your cost of lumber went up, did you stop buying deals? Did you stop building houses? Most also with the lumber going up over the last couple of years, if it was um, copper went up, all kinds of different um, goods were going up, material costs, home values were going up. So if you're also looking at things through a, you know, a tunnel vision, you're hurting yourself. Understanding, seeing the big picture. I went to uh, Bigger Pockets Con. I don't know if any of you know Bigger Pockets, but it's a major platform. It's kind of like a Facebook marketplace. Uh, for real estate, it, it's pretty cool. When I say marketplace, it's basically like a Facebook for real estate. You can go on, there's forums, education, all kinds of stuff. They hold a, a conference every year. And at BPCon, one of the guys who runs uh, the Bigger Pockets podcast, if you listen to podcasts, um, I'll talk at the end really quickly. My, my partner and I, we have one, but also this guy, David Green, the head of the Bigger Pockets podcast, talks about zooming out. So many people's issues is that they're so hyper focus on what they're doing that, you know, people also say like working in the business, it's hard to work on the business while you're in the business because you're, you can't see, you don't have good perspective. Zooming out a little bit and understanding and having better perspective is going to give you obviously a leg up because when you start talking to the lenders, like we talk to other lenders, now all of a sudden you're going to know exactly where to push and where not to push, right? Ultimately, all you guys are trying to do, just like with me, I'm trying to get the loans. You guys are trying to you know, fund, uh, get your deals funded, make money. You just want to get what you want a little bit easier than it doesn't have to be as difficult, basically. Um, you know, education, knowledge, global and domestic events. Like if, if you saw what was going on or what is currently still going on in Ukraine, uh, you know, overseas with the war and then, you know, inflation, the Fed rates raising, COVID. If we don't understand what's going on <clears throat> in the world, that's going to definitely affect expectations. And this is obviously I'm going to transition into the next slide, which is three out of the last four is understanding what's really out there, having realistic expectations. Michael, my partner, um, he's our CEO. Like I said, he was one of my underwriters and him and I used to always, you know, I would bring the deals in. He would be the one who would help me out and get them closed. Mike always talked about setting realistic expectations because if you set realistic expectations, it it's so much easier. I, I would rather say no to a good deal. And we've done this before. Say no to a good deal 
then say yes to a bad deal or string somebody along the process, not set proper expectations. And then all of a sudden when I have to change, like some lenders do, and I'm sorry to throw lenders under the bus, but some lenders will pull you in through their process because they know statistically the further along in the process you are, the more tentacles that are on you, it's harder for you to escape. If you now want to leave later on in the life cycle process of a loan, they will switch, they'll bait and switch you. They will change things on you at the very end. I don't want to live life like that. Um, I'm going to be doing a presentation on Saturday with a group and it's so important to me that I want to express to them and I want to express to you guys, when I go home at night and I lay my head down, I want to be able to relax. I want to be able to look up at the ceiling and know that I did something good that day. I don't want to have anxiety. I don't want to be worried about somebody coming after me. Like we do good business at Alpha. And Andrea, I am so thankful for you having me on tonight. Um, there's something that I take a lot of pride in and alpha takes a lot of pride in like alpha itself. We're a lending company, but being alpha is a lifestyle. It's not just being a, it's not just being a real estate investor. It's about doing things the right way. It's about like, if you're going to have good credit, well, what kind of credit do you have? And I heard this one time from uh, his name is Jose, the credit dude. What type of credit do you have with your family? What type of credit do you have with your uh, with your with your friends with your community, right? We always look at our financial credit score, but what's your credit look like on the street? What does your credit look like behind closed doors? So all of these things I said in the beginning, the way you do everything is the way, you, or the way you do anything is the way you do everything. It's so important, and it, it, it's I cannot emphasize how important it is. The expectation stuff we've kind of talked about expectations, but. One thing I really want you guys to understand is be curious and not judgmental. <clears throat> Don't be judgmental. Be curious, right? Walt Whitman said that. Um, I'm a big Ted Lasso fan, and, and he talks about this in the show. He referenced Walt Whitman's quote. Be curious. Like, even if you don't agree with somebody about something, whether it's political views, maybe it's about some sort of a stance on something. Don't just be judgmental. Like, I, I one of the things that I've tried to do over the years is understand why does somebody think the way that they think? I want to know what went through their, like, yes, there's going to be times where you disagree fundamentally on something and it is what it is. But I want to know why they think the way they think because they have a brain, I have a brain. We all have like the same tools. So I want to be curious and figure out like if it's a lender and they're asking for something, you're allowed to ask us. You have every right. And I'm willing to talk to any one of you after this call if you guys have questions. You know, if we're asking for A, B, and C, maybe you don't know why I'm asking for A, B, and C. You can ask, you can be curious, but to be judgmental and be like, why are you asking for this? Da, 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 you know, whatever it may be, that's not a good way to build rapport. Just like you should be curious with us. We should be curious with you. Like, let's not jump to conclusions, but also the more that you set proper expectations, realistic expectations, you're going to get more out of people because they're going to be more willing to give you information. You're going to be more willing to acquiesce to certain things. But Matt, can I say yeah. something? Yeah. You mentioned before that you turned down good deals. And I was very surprised to hear that because normally that's not my, well, it's never been our experience, but, um, but one of the things when you talk about expectations, people come in thinking they have this great deal and, and they're coming to you with, with something that maybe their first deal and they think it's wonderful and they did all their work and you say no. And, you know, one of the things that I think is really important for people to understand is you're the best no they can get because you're looking at the deal from so many different perspectives, right? You're looking at the deal makes sense. You're looking at, um, you know, what you think the effort's going to be is it really worth the effort that they're going to put into it? And when you say no, at least my experience has been, you're saying no because the deal is not what they think it is. And you're not saying no to them because your deals are built on the project. It's not built on the person. I mean, obviously you need to have a credit score. You need, but it's really built. Is this a good project? Is this worthy of the money? Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that people understand that. Yeah. When you say no, it's usually because the deal is not good. It's never because you're a lousy person. 
<laughs> well, that could happen, but maybe. I, but I mean, very most rarely. Of the time. I, we we always give people the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> and we've been lucky to work with incredible investors along the way. It's really matching up the deal with the sponsor. Because sometimes the sponsor, just like Andrea, the, you had did you had done your first deal at one point, and now you've done hundreds of like projects and, and you have own units, all kinds of stuff. People grow and they evolve. So you may look at a project that might be outside of your skill level, your skill set currently. But if we said no to you, that could only be at that moment in time, right? Time is moving. It's always fluid. So when we look at something, we are looking at something in a vacuum at that exact moment in time. And a new construction project that you want to do today may not be the same new construction project that you bring to us three years from now, because you've done a couple more deals. You have more information. You have more experience. You've been through more um, in your real estate investment career, things are going to be different. So we're always looking at the investor and we're looking at the deal and we want to make sure that those, there's a marriage of the two. And then ultimately is it, is a good risk for you, but is it a good risk for us? Because if your loan goes bad, that's bad for you, but it's also really bad for us. We're the ones giving you the majority of that money. And even though we may be well collateralized, we may be lending to you at a 65, 70, 75% LTV. There's still a lot of headaches that go along with problem loans. We don't like handling problem loans. It is the worst part of our job. It is the thing that we despise the most is dealing with headaches, right? We want to close loans. I want to work on investor success stories and I want to build up my marketing and I want to go out to events and tell people all the cool new things that we're working on. So for you, it's the same thing. When we say no to something, there's a reason why. And back to that quote, don't be judgmental. Ask, why was it you know, that, you, that you don't want to move forward on this? Because if you go to another lender, maybe you may know why this lender chose to not move forward with this. And so all lenders are going to have varying levels of appetite. So we're not the only lender around. Everyone, there's a bank, there's credit, there's private lenders. There's so many different ways to, to skin a cat when it comes to putting together the uh, the capital for a deal. Be curious and find out maybe why they were thinking about it the way they do, because ultimately an underwriter is just evaluating risk. And if they're looking at the overall success of a portfolio of an entire company with a holdings company of managing all these notes, which I now know what a note is, <laughs> um, it's important to understand why they're thinking that way. If you start thinking like a lender, it's amazing because now you're going to level up. Now you're going to be like, oh, I know exactly what they're looking for. And that's what we were talking about before. Expectations, preparation, all those different things, education. So having a realistic and aligned expectations, ask questions, be curious. And my final thing is, and I've been talking about this a lot, but basically just being having a grit mindset. Not everyone's going to have grit, but it's something that I admire. It's something that I strive for. I think all of us have it in us. It's not something that you need to have like some special skill set. This is about just saying, I'm not going to give up. If something happens and I'm uncomfortable and there's stuff that comes up, I'm going to just fight through it. It's about not quitting. And grit is passion and perseverance for very long-term goals. If you are serious, if you're on this call, you're spending a Thursday night, some of you, maybe you like football, the football's coming on soon, or maybe you want to watch Jeopardy, or if you want to read a book, whatever it may be that gets you excited at night when you want to unwind, you don't have to be on this call, but you are. And you don't have to continue to do deals and build up a portfolio. But also, it's not always going to be easy. And the thing is, you have to have grit. If I gave up at the first moment that things were difficult... I would have been done within the first couple of months of me working at Alpha. The first three to six months at Alpha, I probably wanted to quit about maybe two or three times. And I was speaking to my brother at the time. I was talking to my father. I was talking to friends. And I'm like, I think I made a major mistake. Having passion and perseverance for the very long-term goals. I knew the big picture. I knew that this was going to provide me a better life. I was going to have... You know, I wouldn't have to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and personal train until 12 o'clock, make sure that I get to bed by eight o'clock every night, work on Sundays, work on Saturdays when everyone else, else is off, working on holidays. I knew that my future was going to be better if I could just hold on. Having stamina, sticking with your future, not just for the day, not just for a week, not just for a month. 
Grit is living your life like a marathon and not like a sprint. So mindset is very important. Your deals are going to have issues, but make sure that you grit through them. You don't just, at the, at the moment that one little thing happens, like all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, my LLC, there's something wrong. And, I, and oh, well, I can't do this deal. There, If you have a problem mentality, that is the number one problem that you have. You need to have a problem solving mentality. So if you're always looking to solve, if you're solution-based and you're, you, I, I seek out problems, Michael and I, that is literally every day, every day, Michael and I, we were just on the phone before this. And we were talking about certain things and we're always looking for problems. Like we have radar, problem radar. And we're always looking for the first problem because as soon as a new problem comes up, that's a new way for us to get better, right? It's going to tell me exactly where I don't need to go. And it's also going to put me in the right direction. And the more you start problem solving, now all of a sudden it gets like a habit, just like anything. And all of a sudden it becomes repetition, just like working out, just like anything, consistency. You start to do it without even thinking. And the energy that you expend is minimal because you've built that pattern mentally and physically in your body. So a lot of this is having a growth mindset, not being a, a scarcity mindset, thinking, oh, if I need to put money in a deal, this is terrible. If you're going to put in 10% of a project cost and you're going to collect 100% of the equity, so if you're going to do a fix and flip and you can make potentially $50,000 and you're only putting in five or $10,000 of your own money or 15 or 20, and you're going to make potentially 60 or 80, and you're going to have that type of a return on your money, that's incredible. Don't have a scarcity mindset, have an abundance mindset, right? Don't just think that you have to use your own money. There's other ways to use other people's money to get things done. You don't need to use any of your own money. There's so many different ways to get deals funded. And the thing is, if you have the right mindset, it all starts to fall into place. Be proactive, not reactive. That's what I just told you about problem solving, right? Being resourceful. There are tons of people with amazing resources, even on this call. Andrea has great resources. I don't know you, Nate, Dane, Christine, Melissa, but I'm sure you guys know people, right? That's why networking is so powerful and impactful. You don't know what the other person knows. They may know somebody that knows somebody. Um, and having accountability versus being a victim mentality, like how I know so many people, they're always like, the world's out to get me. The world's out to get me. I'm a victim. Don't be a victim. Even if something goes wrong, look at yourself in the mirror and say, what could I have done a little bit better? As soon as you take accountability, you automatically gain control of your life. If you have a victim mentality, you don't have control of what happens to you. If you have accountability, you have control and you can change the narrative. So if something's going wrong in your process with your deal, getting a deal, I mean, um, you know, getting funding, whatever it may be, having that accountability is so powerful. Um, mindset's really important. So like we were talking about, you know, if you want to be a better borrower, just simply have a better mindset. You want to be a better borrower, have better expectations, more realistic expectations. If you want to be a better borrower, educate yourself, fuel yourself with knowledge, right? Feed yourself knowledge, prepare yourself. That is how you do it. And the thing is, if you do it in all those areas, you know, there's no reason why you're not going to be successful. Um, you know, this is really quickly, I'll just go through this tips for being an effective and efficient borrower, you know, keeping all oh, this was, um, you know, once you're in your, in your, um, actual loan, you know, we did a quick little, um, on servicing. Cause I had Pat work with me, Pat's our servicing director, but these are just some ways to just obviously be an effective and efficient borrower. But, um, this is our website here, alphafunding.com. We were talking about pre-approvals. Um, if you have questions, if you want to run a deal by us. Like I said, we're not always and will be the only capital partner, but I think we're a worthy call. If you're going to make a five minute phone call, I think we should definitely be at least one of those for you on any deal you have. Because even if we can't fund it, I can tell you for a fact, I can hopefully connect you with somebody that will be able to, or maybe I can point you in the right direction or give you some feedback that maybe you don't have, right? Because I don't always have the answers. I rely on people that help me as well. And I don't always know the answers to every little problem that comes up. It's all about your support system. I think alpha funding can be an incredible support system for you. So if you have stuff, you should definitely take our information down. Uh, the website's alphafunding.com. Email, you can always email us at info at alphafunding.com or 
phone number 908-900-4894. That little blue apply now button in the middle. If you ever want to get pre-approved, you can either go to the way, way top where it says get pre-approved. We've been servicing uh, thousands of successful borrowers since 2007. You can get pre-approved right there, or you can just click on apply now. And that apply now button is going to take you right to um, this button right here. It will take you right to our pre-approval. So these are our two apps, short-term, long-term, the quotes that we have for each, and then the pre-approval. So this would be, if you wanted to, you could always just go straight to it at the top. But um, <clears throat> anything you need, you know, you should also follow us on uh, YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, Alpha Funding. Uh, my podcast, Mike and I, we talk a lot. As you can imagine, I've referenced him multiple times. You know, we decided over the last year or so, we're like, we always talk on the phone and it's just, sometimes it's just random stuff. It could be sports. It could be about, you know, it could be about life, whatever it is. I was like, why don't we record this? Why don't we do a podcast? And, you know, we've started to have some really amazing guests on. I'm looking forward to having Andrea on soon too. Um, you know, definitely give us a listen. If you're on Instagram, it's at Mike underscore and underscore Matt underscore show. Just type in Mike and Matt show and it'll pop up. And also our Instagram account, Alpha Funding. It's just Alpha underscore funding. But if you type in Alpha Funding, it'll pop up. Um, there's a lot of different ways that we can help you. I am also building out a education platform that we're going to be offering through Alpha. There's no charge to it. It's literally just going to be like, we're all about giving. And I talked about this in the beginning. We want to give you more. Because the more we give you, the more you're going to give back. And we're going to be putting together modules on how to be a better borrower, understanding programs, how to break down deals how to supplement the things you're doing. If you're at a, you know, this networking group, you're part of this group. Well, when stuff happens, how do I best navigate it? Maybe there's resources that you can be putting yourself in touch with. We're going to try and do our best to really um, showcase the best of the best people that we know in our, in our sphere, whether it's on the West coast, East coast, nationwide, whoever it may be, um, that'll be a part of alpha U soon, which is something that's very, very exciting but uh, in the meantime, just definitely give us a follow. And Andrea, I want to thank you very, very much for having me on tonight. I want to thank you very much for being on. I also just want to make one suggestion because you had all these things about being prepared and, and your go to the website and apply. One thing you can do um, now is create a file for yourself. And in the file, you put... Um, a copy of your operating agreement, a copy of your um, your um, LLC, a driver's license, all the things that you know, and Matt can go through a whole list that the lender is going to ask. Because when you apply online, they're not asking you for all the forms. You're going to put the form in. He's going to go through it. Well, actually, David's probably going to go through it, right? And, mm -hmm. and he's going to go through it and he's going to say, okay, I need this, 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 and this. If it's in a file, you get it to them. They're very quick to respond. And But you need all the data together. So I am not going to try and share everything. Um, ask Matt. He'll be happy to tell you what you need. But create that file for yourself. And it's always there and only always available. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I have one of those myself. Like inside of my, <coughs> I have a, obviously a folder on my computer. And I have my own where I have all the key documents, whether it's tax returns. Yeah. We don't we don't collect tax returns at Alpha. I'm just giving you examples. Driver's license. How many times do you, you know, if you're trying to get a passport and they're like, I need a copy of your driver's license. Like these things should be always readily available. Like we have speed dial. Why don't we have speed dial for important things that are in our life? Like being organized is not complicated. It's just effort, just like grit. It doesn't require skill. It's effort. And like Andrew was saying, once you have it, it makes things so much easier. That's definitely a good tip. Yeah. Well, I've learned from people like you that that's what we need to do. So I've learned from I've learned from other people as well. <laughs> I've I've messed up long. One thing that I've taken <laughs> a lot of pride in in my life is every time I mess up, I try not to mess up twice. Sometimes I mess up twice and then I'm like, okay, I don't want to mess up three times. <laughs> but we don't is, want to make them the same mistake. You're going to mess yeah. up multiple times. Just make yes. it something new. <laughs> yes. And also learn from other people's mistakes. That is like, I have had incredible, such an amazing 
um, insight into the world of real estate investing, entrepreneur, being a business owner, because I've been around people that have done it and I've learned so much from them. So it doesn't even mean yourself making a mistake, learning from other people's mistakes. Like I've seen problems that come up when you do a joint venture, when you do a project, when you loan to something that maybe you shouldn't be loaning on. Right. So, you know, mistakes are actually, people always say mistakes are like bad, negative, I think mistakes are positive. It's all about how you look at them, perspective. But as a as a mentor and a coach, right? The thing that you're really talking about is think about the negative, right? You can go online and you find everything out you need to do to build a real estate business, to build a lending business. It doesn't matter. Google will teach you everything. So you go out and you you learn what there is, but you don't have the experience. And so the things that you want is someone to help you that Matt's been through many loans that should have been good and went bad. And maybe he can give you suggestions, right? Things that I've done that I've made errors on that you hopefully learn from my mistake and don't make it on your own. Um, and that's uh, something that's really helpful from people with the knowledge. Yeah. Now I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> Full screen. That's all right. We got to see the whole thing. In it. And, now, and now we're done. <laughs> so anybody have questions for Matt? Yes, then, I have one. Perfect. Go ahead, Nate. Uh, can you just run through like what we should have in that file? I know Andrea mentioned the operating agreement for an LLC driver's license. You mentioned uh, personal financial statement, you know, your credit score, track record, anything else that should be in that file? that I can jot down. I have these items here. Anything else? Yeah, I was going to, because it's a little bit different when you look at, you should have a master folder for everything, right. but yeah. some things are going to be needed for specific things. Like on our rental DSCR loans, there's certain documents that are required where on the, on the bridge loans, we only require certain things. I can get you guys, if you want, I'll send over to Andrea and she can send it out to the group, our list of documents that we require Okay. Um, at the very end of our application, you'll see on the very last page on the website, if you do, if we have the honor of being able to look at one of your deals and you send an application, you'll see the documents to be submitted. There'll be a list of it, but I have a paper document that we can submit to you guys and, and you guys can see if you can check off all those boxes and that'll put you in a really, really good position. Okay. Now, for um, those of us that haven't done any deals, obviously we don't have a track record, so yeah. Is that going to have an impact on a pre-approval? No. So okay. if you're somebody who's never done a deal, are you looked at as an, is that a negative or is that a positive or is that maybe? A a, I, I believe it's a positive. It just, you know, I haven't been through the underwriting process, so I don't know how the lender looks at that. Mm -hmm. So when I can only speak about alpha. Um, I know that there's a lot of lenders out there. Like I said, we're part of a lot of organizations. Generally a newer borrower carries more risk, but there's a lot of real estate investors who were not real estate investors until they did their first deal. And you don't know what you don't know. And also we can't predict your success, but we can look at specific things that lead to success. People in other fields that have certain traits, like if you're really good at organization, if you're somebody that's really good at planning, preparation, execution, if you're good at organizing, like if it's project management in different fields, like we found also special skills like being a contractor, being a realtor who has access, intimate knowledge of the real estate market. You can come in, become a real estate investor. And the real estate investor world is really not much different from all these other worlds. It's like with me as a personal trainer, learning some of the different skill sets, but most of that stuff can be acquired and learned. So what we would do is like a newer investor, we would kind of get to know you, figure out what our appetite would be for you. Generally, we want you to put a little bit more money down. We want to have, um, you know, a higher credit score. So we can't be as flexible on lower credit. Some investors like Andrea, she's done a hundred deals. If we saw a 600 credit score, which I know she doesn't have, but like we may be more amenable to that 600 credit score because she's got a track record. She might have a lot of money out, you know, real estate investing. You could be on a roller coaster with your money um, because of your credit lines. And we're going to be more apt to work with somebody with a lower credit score if they have experience. So we'll just want to see, you know, stronger credit, stronger liquidity, all the things that you would look to offset the risk, right? If risk goes up, 
We want to see you offset it with some other stuff, but that doesn't mean that we won't lend to you. We do lend to first time investors and it's one of the most rewarding things that we do. There's a lot more handholding. Uh, obviously, you know, you're calling us a lot more. You may think you're being annoying. You're not because we know that 10 years from now, when you've done 20 deals and we were one of the first lenders to give you all that time and attention when you were nervous and you were anxious, you're going to remember that. And we have a track record. I can tell you confidently and proudly that we have lent to um, usually about 70 to 80% retention every single month. Almost every single one of our loans are people that continue to come back with us. We may catch a new person every once in a while. We get the opportunity to work with someone, build a relationship. But when we do, they continue to come back. So like if you're a first time investor, we understand the value of the relationship. It's not a transaction for us. Um, Matt, I'm sorry. When you were talking before, you said you had the list of things. If you send me that sheet, I'll put it on Facebook. I keep putting myself on mute because I have a cough that's really loud. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to get that for you. I'm sending it to the team right now. If they can send me Perfect. a copy of our documents that we require. Great. Thank you. So any other questions? Yeah, I have a quick question. So a lot of the uh, private lenders that, that I've seen, they charge um, upfront fees. And a lot of times, you know, that immediately kills the deal or yeah. still kills their relationship. Uh, what, <laughs> what's Alpha's position on, on that? So I'm a big believer, like I, if you've been getting anything across this webinar, is that I'd rather give before I receive. If we are asking for something before we've exchanged value, I think that that's a little disingenuous and we do not require anything up front. Now, if you have an inspection that you're doing on the property, if you're doing an appraisal on the property, if you're doing an environmental test on the property as your due diligence as an investor for your deal, not as us as the lender, but we require it and you're just doing it for your deal. Those are upfront costs that you may inquire, just like when you're working with a realtor, if you're paying for something. We don't require any dollars up front unless we close. So when someone's asking for an application fee or like a, a retainer for their service, I'm very weary about that. 100% Matt. Origination fees and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, especially like if it were like, a, I don't know, like an underwriting fee, like a non-refundable application fee or something. Like there's different names. You'll see with different lenders, the vernacular will change. But when you really pull all the you know, all the, the curtains back, it's all basically the same. They're looking for money up front with maybe not providing you the service that you looked for in the first place. Right. Especially if the deal doesn't close and, and you put out money. Then. And so that's a very good point. And I want you guys to understand, like we, sometimes they look at us as the bad guys as because we're private lenders or we're hard money lenders. We're bad guys. We work with you, not against you. If your loan doesn't close, we might have spent months on your deal. We might have spent weeks on your deal, hours, you know, fighting with attorneys and capital and realtors. And if it doesn't close, we don't make a dollar. So we care just as much, I would say, if not more than you do on your project. So you can always know confidently when we work with you, we're working with you, not against you. Good. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, Matthew, thank you very much. I very much appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you again soon. I'll be back in Jersey in two weeks. So maybe we'll get together. Yeah, absolutely. And everyone, thank you. Um, you'll all get a um, list of the people to contact one you don't know, call them up, set up a cup of coffee. As Matt said, and I say all the time, your network is everything. So get out there and meet people. Um, and um, I look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a Well, actually, sure. next week, William is going to be here, not me. I will be in North Carolina. So I'm not real, real, I'm sorry. Real quick, Matt, yeah. can you put your information in the chat? <laughs> Yeah, um, it's just Matt at alphafunding.com. And then okay. the, the, con the contact info is the same, info at alphafunding.com, www.alphafunding.com. But Matt at alphafunding is my email. Okay, great. All right, everyone. Have a fabulous week. Talk to you soon.
Vale. Thank you, everybody. Bye.